risen Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, the victory of Easter belongs to Jesus. It's His. The one who suffered, died, and was buried, descended into hell, conquered the devil, destroyed the power of hell, and took from the devil all his might. The third day, he walks out of the grave. He took your sins and the sins of the world to the cross. Good Friday. They no longer belong to you, but to the crucified one. <clears throat> and he said on the cross, it's finished. Jesus, who shared in our flesh and blood, who was made to be like us in every respect, <clears throat> was tempted in every way, the scripture says, as we are, except that he was without sin. He had no sin of his own. Never having brought shame upon his holy name, never mistreating other people, never trying to control someone else or manipulate them for their own benefit. That didn't belong to Jesus. He never forgot to love or honor his neighbor or his father in any way. <clears throat> Jesus was holy. Sent by the Father, though, to dwell in the midst of sinners. Jesus was sent to redeem, to save, to take the sins of those who were around him, and to take your and my sin to the cross. So Jesus came for what we call, what Luther even called, the great exchange. He came to take your sin and give you his righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21 puts it this way, For our sake he made him who knew no sin to be sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God in him. So Jesus, the Lamb of God, bore all sin. Does all mean all here? The sin of the self-righteous Pharisees, he bore it. The false teachers of the law, the false doctrine of the Sadducees, who didn't believe in the resurrection, he took their sin. Greedy tax collectors, he took their sin. Lost prostitutes, brothers fighting against brother, drunkards, thieves, lustful, hateful, all of it. The sin of every single sinner, including you and me, including the things that you and I think are tempted to think he could never forgive that. He took that to the cross, whatever that is. He put it to death, never to be counted or heard in the heavenly court again. Since he put it all to death on the cross, the Father no longer needs to judge it. It's judged already on the cross with the suffering and death of the Son of God. As Jesus said, Good Friday, it is finished. Then on the third day, Jesus, the Son of God, walked out of the grave, victor over everything. And that's why the angel tells the women who go to the grave in our gospel reading, he tells them, he's not here, for he has risen, as he said. And this shouldn't have been a surprise. They, they should have known this. But the reality is, is, Reason and strength is not how we believe. Faith is not just reason and strength. That's what the catechism tells us. But I believe I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit, He gives it. He gives the faith. So Jesus had predicted this. The prophets predicted it for thousands of years before it. But if his disciples, if they were listening, they would have picked up on it again and again, but they didn't still get it. We know that. We get frustrated kind of with them when we read the New Testament, don't we? But it was a gift. How do you get it? Well, it's by gift. Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the Word of Christ. So Jesus said, for example, I am the resurrection and the life. Or destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. He said a lot more too. 
But the day of victory certainly belongs to him. He does it all. For on the third day, the innocent man, the one who bears our sin, the sins of the world, is put to death, and he walks out of the tomb on Easter. He is risen, and death cannot. The demons who count our sins and torment our consciences, they couldn't hold them. All the power of the world, even the Roman government, the great empire, one of the greatest in the history of the world, they couldn't hold them. Jesus exits the tomb as a slave to no one, as the victor over all. And he doesn't do this just to show us how to be better people. He doesn't come to motivate us to do our part, because he's done his part. That's not it. And he doesn't do this to give us some sort of lesson on 12 steps to kind of cleaning up your existence or your life. He doesn't do it to give you a purposeful life and to secretly find this some kind of a hidden purpose. Jesus comes to make this exchange. Jesus comes what is to do what's impossible for you and I to do for ourselves. We can't do it. But he does it for us. So Paul says in Colossians 3 in our epistle reading this morning, if then you have been raised with Christ. Seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. This is why it came. The great exchange. He took our death to clothe us in his resurrection. So that Paul can say that we, you and me, we have been raised up with Christ. The things above that Paul speaks of, is the heavenly courtroom before God the Father, the reality. The verdict, it's already been settled, forgiven, clean. And Jesus is at the right hand of the Father as our advocate, as our defender, as our defense attorney, quite literally. The scripture also tells us that the same Jesus who is our defense is also the one who prays for you and for me. So if Jesus, death and resurrection is just something that we talk about in history that happened 2,000 years ago and has no relevance to us. Or maybe some, something you've, you've heard before is Jesus, death and resurrection is a moral example for us to live by. You hear that a lot. But if that's all it is, it doesn't really do us any good because it doesn't deal with the real issue, which is our sin that we can't get rid of on our own. But the death and resurrection of Jesus does us, does us good if it's ours. If when he died, you died. If when he rose again, you rose again. If his resurrection is our resurrection, then we no longer belong to the realm of death, sin, the demons. And if Jesus walking out of the tomb is for him to bring you into eternal life, then resurrection not only does you great good, but it is eternal life itself for you. But this is why Jesus came to give this to you. Our sin, our guilt, our shame and death, it belongs to him because he took it. And after his resurrection, his defeat of death, his imprisonment of the demons, his holiness before his Father, righteousness, it belongs to us. It's given to you and I as gift. But how? How does he give it? Well, if we back up in the same epistle in Colossians, chapter 2, we hear at 2.12 how he gives it. Paul says, having been buried with him in baptism. So having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him, Jesus, from the dead. So baptism is how he brings Holy Week to you. So through the gift of holy baptism, our Lord's death, his resurrection, are not just theories or history from 2,000 years ago, but his death and resurrection are brought to you through his baptizing of you. Even though he does it through the hand of a pastor or through the hand of whoever baptized you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
It was Jesus who was there bringing his gifts, his death, and his resurrection to you. Because Jesus delivers to you everything that he won on Good Friday and Easter Sunday through this means, through your baptism. Because your sin no longer belongs to you. It's Jesus. He took it. And in his divine service, when he gathers us to the name each week, the reality of heaven, this courtroom, this deliberation that says sin's forgiven is once again brought to your ears. As the Lord sends you a preacher, a pastor, to speak Jesus' words to you, that you're free, that you are forgiven, that on account of Jesus and his death and his resurrection for you, you're clean. That is the reality of Easter brought to your ears, poured over your head with water and the promise of God, and put into your mouth through his true body and his true blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. That's Jesus' last will and testament for us, even today. And so as those who belong to the Lord of life, the risen Lord, who is the resurrection and the life, those of us baptized into his name, the name that's above every name, we give thanks in response to what he's already done. By extolling his gifts, by thanking God in song, and by saying together and confessing that, O oh death, where is thy sting? O oh grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the name of the risen Jesus, amen. amen. Now may the peace of our risen Lord, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.